So uh, officially, I am drinking the Kool-Aid of Popper, and it is an interesting format. Again, I will preface this by saying, yes, I benefit greatly from this new set or this new format. I have a large collection, and many of these cards I have in foil. And the prices I'm looking at right now are unbelievable. So I have a lot of Innistrad. I actually still have Innistrad sealed. And this is not a very difficult card to get. It is a foil common. And back when I played, this was worth no money. Like, no money. Now, Popper has made this an $18 foil card. I'm not as interested in buying non-foils. I don't feel like there's much room for growth there. But in the foils, especially the old foils, if in, in a Strat foil, which isn't even that old, can be $18, then that tells me a lot about the market, that there are popper players who are ignoring the point of popper, I guess, and they are just pimping out their popper decks, which presents an opportunity. So even these bad zombies and the merfolk zombies, it's $2.20 because the cards themselves do not have to be all that powerful. Popper cards are commons, and commons typically are not the best cards. You're not going to see a Tamagoyf at a common. Therefore, things like this zombie from Invasion could be $2 in foil, which you might think, oh, what, what is, who cares? Well, this is bulk. This is a bulk foil. A lot of the bulk foil commons from especially the oldest sets are now worth $2. That's insane. Even if it buy list is for 50 cents, that's way more than the 5, 10 cents that you normally get. So the key here is to not sell your old cards and have a good time. Watch put on some Netflix. I just finished Imposters, which was kind of a funny show. I thought it was actually pretty hilarious. And I found about a few hundred copies of just valuable cards. Like I had these dudes in foil and even back when he was a tier one deck, the mono black deck, of course, he wasn't worth $7 back then in foil, but now he's worth $7 today. And this is from a recent set. It's because of Popper. He sees play in Popper. He's very good. He drains you for a ton. He was good when he was in standard. So there is opportunity. Uh, whenever there is information that is not disseminated uh, or information is not the same, meaning that there's people who know this and people who don't, there is opportunity. And opportunity isn't really on the reserve list anymore because everyone kind of knows that. Opportunity is in these popper foils because the multiplier is even better than a regular foil. So let's say you have a JST Mind Sculptor. 50 bucks, multiplier maybe six times, eight times if you're lucky. Not that impressive. These multipliers are, you know, from 19 cents to $7.50. I like it. I like the large multipliers because it is something where you can make a lot of money. Now, where would you go buy these in bulk, right? Where would you get a bulk uh, hickory woodlot from Mercadian Mask? Stores still sell this. Uh, my local game store still has a pile and they have a binder of foils and they charge like 25 cents or 50 cents for a foil. I found one of these the other day. I was like, oh, well, this is, well, I knew this type of card was good. I didn't know which one, but I got lucky with the green ones. So I actually got two of them for a dollar. You can find a lot of really great deals and who this is rewarding, not that like, it's rewarding people who have large collections. It is impossible for you to have a large collection and not own at least one foil copy of this. It just is. You never traded it away. These cards are impossible to trade away. Like seventh, seventh edition foils we all know are valuable, but lo and behold, the next card I'm going to show you is just insane. I, I could never imagine the foil being you know, $3. It's Raging Goblin. Like, literally, it's a goblin that's a 1-1 with haste for one red. It's $3 in foil. I would have never imagined this when 
I, I just can't imagine what Popper is doing. Like the Popper regular prices haven't really, uh, they're still pretty steady, especially a card like Raging Goblin, which has been reprinted several times. But the foil prices are just the multiplier, something I haven't seen. I, I haven't seen a multiplier like that. And when you look at like a Misty Rainforest multiplier, the foil for the original one, and I'm not talking about the Modern Masters 2017, which obviously the foiling ratio is different there. The original foil Shocklands, they have good premiums. But nothing compares to a premium that a foil common and popper has. And from what I can tell, people are still supporting Popper. Um, you have some of the biggest YouTubers promoting the format or even inventing their own decks. Or Like, look at this. Time Spiral. I love this set. I bought a ton of it. $12. I know I have this. Like, it's impossible for you to open. You have these crappy foils because no one wanted them from you. You wouldn't even put these in your binder. So as long as you didn't sell them for bulk, you're good to go. Because out of these cards I'm showing you today, I guarantee you, you own, if you've been playing Magic for a while, you own at least a few of them because they're not incredibly rare. And at the previous point in history, they were impossible to move. Like how many people back then are, are going to say, oh, I want uh, this card? My God, it's an 84 cents card in time. Wow, non-foil is 84 cents. Yeah, that's pretty good too. All right, I mean, I should pick these up. People actually trade for them. And the great part about Popper, it's not like EDH. I'm not a fan of EDH because, not I, I'm not a fan of EDH speculation because it's too difficult to move. These move four times faster because people want play sets. Okay, what if I told you this little frog from the worst set, one of the worst sets, expected value sets in the history. This set has worse expected value than Dragon Maze. At least Dragon Maze, you had Voice of Resurgence. Here, your value is based on two commons, Spore Frog and Ristic Study. Everything else is terrible. The foil common is almost $30, $29.50. I love it because that's the expected value. I would much rather have a foil common be worth $29 than a foil mythic because it's much more likely you can get this card in foil. The probabilities, I mean, my gosh, imagine it's like a fog on a frog. Frog frog. Hmm. That's probably its nickname. I love it, and I'm going to ride out this. Um, I'm going to sell as much popper cards. I have hundreds of copies of these cards, and they were totally useless the other day. And then one day I woke up, and Tolarian was promoting it, and then it became like, holy crap, like Utopia. I, I'm almost certain I have this in foil just because I have almost every common in foil. I bought a ton of magic cards. I have a ton of bulk, and I have lots of these and non-foil. So maybe I get lucky and I get some of them in foil. The real key here is, is the format going to last or is it a bubble? I don't believe it's a bubble anymore. And it's not just me speaking out of, you know, greed, which, you know, you have to take my opinion with bias that I have benefited from this. I haven't benefited in terms of selling. My website is still down. Uh, again, I'm not going to get into too much of it, but I spent all my money buying back one of my companies and now I'm poor. So I need to wait until like March or April before I get my money back or before I like recoup enough money to continue my lifestyle I previously was living. But I love it and I would invest in it. I'm not scared to invest in Popper because What's happening here is slightly different from Tiny Leaders. It's slightly different from uh, Frontier. And the fact that this is a cheap format. And no matter what you really do with these cards, they can be reprinted anytime. So it's like modern, but with cards that are much cheaper because there's more copies of them. There's much higher supply on a majority of these cards. I mean, yes, you do have some commander cards, which are quote common. 
that are, you know, harder to get because there's not that many copies of them. But for the most part, these are not going, this format won't be too expensive. It cannot be too expensive because it's just commons. And I like it. I like when the common has a very high expected value because that's interesting. That's way better than a rare or a mythic being the expensive chase card. Just because when you have one Utopia, you're likely to have eight or 10 of them. Like if you were to open a box of Dissension right now, maybe you get five or six Utopias. Maybe you get a foil one would be nice. Anyway, I think Popper's the real deal. Uh, leave me a comment if you agree or disagree. Bye, guys.